you think Romeo is a bit of a stalker, particularly going to Juliet's balcony? Right, who wrote that? <laughs> These are excellent. What is the biggest mistake you've ever made on stage? I forgot to bring a prop on and had to ad lib for about five minutes about the prop that I was supposed to bring on that I'd left, but it will come on eventually. Oh no. Yeah, sad times. I did blank. It was a monologue. There was no one to help me. So I gamely just tried to carry on and then thought, what's going on? The lights are different. They've changed the lights. Lights have gone down. It's a, it's a disaster. And then came on stage and asked what happened there and thought they were going to say, yeah, really sorry. But they said, no, you, you jumped a whole scene. And then I sat there thinking, how much would it cost me to reimburse everybody in the theatre? <laughs> <laughs> I've laughed on stage at a point where I wasn't supposed to laugh. We were doing this restoration play, and towards the end, there's a big dance number we do. One of the other actors slipped and fell and hit the back wall of the set, but then tried to <laughs> carry on with the dance. Like, all of us lost it, but there was a whole other scene to do after the dance, and I stood on stage and just cried laughing. Oh, wow. Didn't try and hide it, just stood there. Wow. It was awful. Once I brought on a sandwich. Just because, or...? I was eating it in the interval, and I hadn't finished it. I had to go on stage, and I was like, scenes in a living room. Sometimes I eat a sandwich in my house. So I just went on eating a sandwich. I'd come off stage, I changed costume, and I was waiting to go on. The lights came up, and I looked around, is everybody? This is, I'm gonna have words with the guys after this. This is so it's me. And I was on the wrong side of the stage. So what the audience saw was this, this, this blob, <laughs> this lump. <laughs> going, <laughs> and I appeared on the other side of the stage. <laughs> <laughs> What's the maddest thing you've ever done because you like somebody? That's such a good question. I actually, with my current partner on our first date. She was coming to kiss me and I panicked and kissed her forehead. <laughs> and that was my, <laughs> that was our first kiss. I kissed her on the forehead and she, because she was there, <laughs> she kissed my chin. <laughs> and the rest is history, so. Imagine your character was on Tinder, what would their bio say? Hey, uh, <laughs> just a nice guy looking for someone to have some good chats with. Don't mess me about. That's really adorable and a bit pathetic. <laughs> it's been <brilliant. laughs> Desperately in need of love. No, but that seems that too, too needy. Romeo, I think, would love it. A mean dancer, like Silk, looking for a partner who can also dance with a sensitive side. Romeo's would be heartbroken. At the beginning of the play, if Rosario's out there, then here I am. Swipe right, swipe right. <laughs> swipe right. Swipe, swipe right if you know Rosaline. Why does the friar feel like he needs to get involved with everything? He sees two young people <laughs> who are unparented. And because he is their holy father, he sees himself as a conduit for something bigger than them. However, his own humanity gets in the way of higher possibility. It's a terrible collision of human desire and a holy possibility. Thank you, Tamsin. <laughs> and now, <laughs> on to the weather. The nurse and the friar, would they be a good couple? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the friar's had a bit of a shady past, hasn't he? But with plants and stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So maybe the nurse would like a bit of danger in her life. I think they'd be a cute couple. Yeah. I think the friar is balanced and the nurse is a bit excitable. I think they'd balance each other out nicely. And actually, I think as a couple, they'd be great parents. I think that there would be a lot of tussles, a lot of emotional and psychological and spiritual <laughs> battles between them. Did you come the top of the class in drama? No. I did. I, I did, had a great time. I did quite well, yeah. I think so. I think if you enjoy it and you have a nice time, then yeah. <laughs> oh, <that's a> good... <laughs> <laughs> no. no. <clears throat> I didn't actually do drama in school. So we just used to do school plays. It was an all girls school, so all the girls had to play like boys parts and I was always the lad. The lad version of Jesse was French plaits and two red dots and a huge monster, huge suit. I definitely did get good marks 
and my drama teacher used to take me to see complicity shows and Royal Shakespeare Company shows. I come away so excited, but I'm very dyslexic, so I couldn't really write down what I was thinking. I would talk and talk, I could talk for hours about what I'd just seen. But when, I, when it came to writing it down, I wasn't very good. So yeah, no, I wasn't top of the class for sure. In drama school, were you were you then the favourite or no, still absolutely. bottom of the pile? Not bottom of the pile, just, you know. Just left behind, just out to dry. Not left behind, just like... Just on your Hang own. on. Just out there. Just one of Abandoned. the... Abandoned. Just, just really sad. We should move on. How do you pretend to be in love with somebody you don't like in that way? Oh, You don't have to pretend. I feel like an agony aunt. You shouldn't be pretending, I don't think. You don't have to love it. Oh, oh, sorry, my. sorry, sorry. Um, You're taking on the Agni Anne character yeah. way too much. You shouldn't do that. You're like, <laughs> that, Romeo's dead, I'm no Agni Anne. Yeah. <laughs> I think you use what you know in real life. But Jesse and I are lucky because we're friends and so much of how we work is allowing each other to like love and be like open and responsive and allowing yourself to be in love in those moments yeah. and just being like, go for it. And you can love someone in a million ways. There's not one way of loving someone. Just like, love them. Yeah. Uh, which is more fun, acting in plays or in films? I've done mostly plays, so I, I, I'm going to say I don't really know. But I love plays, and this experience here at Dinner has been amazing. Yeah. But acting in plays is so different to acting in films. It just requires a completely different set of muscles. They are both equally fun, but actually it's more about the people. If you've got people that you're working with, you get on with them a lot and it's good material, it's always uh, going to be fun. I've always said, um, <laughs> the grass is greener on the other side. Because whenever I'm doing a film, I'm like, ah, oh, God, I just miss being on stage. When you're doing a play, and it's like the hundredth performance, <laughs> and you're doing the same thing again, the eighth time this week, you something go, it would just be great to just get a really sexy camera angle on this scene and just be done with it forever. I prefer plays. Yeah, I prefer plays. Every audience gets a completely different experience, experience. every night, and that's really fun to share with people. Yeah. Plays are very much part of a team. Um, yeah. Films are like, just on your own. Mm. Solo warrior. Mm. How come Romeo gets over Rosaline so quickly? Because he meets me. Yeah. This one strolls in. It's unrequited love which can be blinding and toxic in its own way. But then for someone to walk in, you're just like, Phew. actually, I think it helps me a little bit is to go from like, a sort of sad, lost soul of like, I love someone who doesn't love me back to like, Phew. perfect line. Thank you so much. I love those questions.